G'day YouTube and welcome to Aussie Backyard Food. It's March the 26th, 2017 and finally the sun's come out. It's a beautiful day here in the Blue Mountains. We've had weeks of rainy weather and I've simply been unable to do this job that I've been greatly looking forward to uh, all year. I, in fact, I do every year. It's a, my favourite job as a beekeeper to take, to harvest the honey off the bees um, to get that golden good stuff, liquid gold. So um, watch on as I uh, show you a little bit how I do that, a little bit about how I uh, keep my bees and uh, enjoy. Few hive beetle in there, as always, around here. I don't actually use any chemicals and uh, and or uh, beetle management systems. Um, I find the bees, as long as they're strong and healthy enough, are able to contend with the little beetles. Although I do enjoy squashing them, I must say. Let's have a look at the first outer frame. Look at that. Fully capped. Both sides. Bloody beautiful. Sweet. I prefer not to use gloves if I can get away with it, if I don't cop too many stings on the fingers. Uh, it just makes it, a, it means I, I actually kill less bees because I'm a little bit more dexterous. As you can see, not 100% capped. Down the bottom there is still a bit of open cell going on, but capped enough. Once again, a little bit open down there, but I find as long as they're, the frames are at least 90% capped, the honey won't ferment. Because that's the biggest risk with not 100% ripened honey. If the water content is too high in your honey, you run the risk of it fermenting as soon as you put it in storage, which is no good, obviously. The method I usually use to get my honey off my bees is to sit them to the side of the uh, hive for a few minutes and then I find they're usually a bit easier to shake off. Probably should do that around the front of the hive so I don't tread on them. All right, then we can get them in a box. So this is my one polystyrene hive. Uh, all the rest are a combination of either plastic or timber uh, boxes. And I've had the most success with this polystyrene hive. It's a Paradise Bee Box. And I intend to get any more equipment that I get, I intend to get more of the polystyrene. I find it really works well. Particularly in this climate. It may not be for everyone in every climate, but here it seems to do really well. So I reckon they're starting to actually clean honey out of those bottom cells in preparation for the queen to start laying in there. So that's the um, one disadvantage with not using a queen excluder. Um, I find by far the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Um, and as you can see, there's still no brood in there. We've gotten in with plenty of time. The rest of the honey will be 
uh, to that low moisture content enough that it won't ferment. So that's the main thing. And there she is, evidence that she's up here. Hopefully you can see her right there. She's up here getting ready to lay right there. Isn't she beautiful? Try and give you a close up. right in the middle of frame there, going about her work. Bloody awesome. Very carefully put her back on this frame. We're not gonna to touch this frame. Oh, Jesus, bit of weight in that. And on to the next hive we go. This hive's actually a swarm that I caught 18 months ago. It's done really well. I caught this swarm up at Wentworth Falls and it's just boomed. Really good genetics here. Um, probably a, a good time to talk about what I do to the top of a hive as well uh, to protect it from extreme heat and probably a bit of extreme cold as well in winter. I just put I simply put a, uh, a slab of polystyrene from a a uh, green grocer uh, that his fruit would come in cut the sides off because unfortunately it's a little bit too small uh, but it does a lot to protect that main belting sun from penetrating the lid uh, I find in summer so let's get into it we resident huntsman Yeah. This hive is a little bit more on the antsy side, so I'll give them a bit extra smoke, I think. Alright, don't know if you'll be able to see the hive beetles, probably not from there, but uh, like I said before, I love squishing them. Little bastards. Not too many actually. Oh looky here. I think we're in for a treat. A few bees bouncing off my visor, indicating that they're a bit on the aggro side, so I'm gonna go the glove straight up I reckon. Oh yeah, look at all that fully capped goodness. <laughs> Bloody beautiful. Look at that.
So here's a branch from uh, a bloodwood tree. You can see that's just fallen off in some heavy wind, but that's what's been flowering around here, and that's what's going to heavily influence the honey that we take off the bees today. Well, it's a sweaty old job, but this is what it's all about. Just look at the uh, thickness of that frame of honey, fully capped. So today I finally get a chance to test out my new extractor and give it a spin. All right, first we've got to take the caps off our frames of honey. I used to use a hot knife and I'm giving this a go for the first time, a scraper, a capping scraper. Um, I like the idea of not applying excessive heat or any heat to the honey and knowing that I'm getting a 100% raw product. I like it, nice and smooth, well balanced. Mmm, different flavour this year. I might be biased. But I think it might be the, a really good flavour this year. My best yet. This frame's interesting because I've been toying with the approach of uh, doing a foundationless frame. So as opposed to all my other frames that I've just extracted from, this one has got no foundation in the center of it, no wax foundation. So if you don't know what that is, that's um, it's a sheet of wax that gets pressed with 100% bees, bees wax that we mount on some wire that we thread through these little holes in the side of the frame. Um, and that gives the bees a really uh, helpful head start. But yeah, it's, it's a fiddly process to install, so I've been toying with the idea and experimenting with going foundationless. So that's just simply um, ignoring these holes, not putting any wire through, not putting any foundation on, just putting a thin starter strip of wax on the underside of this top bar uh, for the bees to, to draw their wax comb down on. So let's, let's just see how it extracts and hopefully it doesn't fall to pieces. Different flavour again. That's what you often find from one frame to the next because a different plant will be in flower and the bees will fill up the frames from one week to the next. Excuse me while I spit out the wax. Each frame will have a different flavour. Okay, I just discovered that the outlet valve on my extractor was a little bit too low to fit over the top of my honey bucket. So I've knocked up a few feet to go under the feet of the extractor. And don't you just love those panicked 
jobs on the run. Okay, not so good. As you can see, that one actually had foundation in it. So, I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. Uh, I guess, I mean, I'm, and I am surprised at the high revs that the new extractor gets just wound by hand. Um, it really does get spinning and get that centrifugal force happening. So, and obviously the, this is fresh comb. This is the first time I've extracted from this comb. So it's at its weakest, um, but still a bit disappointed in that. But, you know, there's enough there for the bees to re rebuild on. So um, I'm still, I still uh, am happy with how uh, easy it is to, to get it spinning and up to speed. Another partial blowout. That is the foundationless one. So it held up better than the one with foundation on it. So there you go. And another foundationed frame, uh, as you can see. So it's, it's pretty well uh, damaged, quite a few splits through it. Fresh comb once again, but still, it's obviously not just the um, the foundationless factor, I'd say. A quick tip to all the other novice beekeepers out there. Be sure you check the gate on your honey bucket is closed before you start pouring honey into it. Look at that golden goodness flow out, eh? Beautiful. So this is the only filtration my honey received. Yep, you might even find the odd bee leg in there because uh, it's fairly crudely filtered. That's how I like it. I like to know that all the goodness is going through a bit of pollen, um, all those beneficial enzymes uh, it's it's raw, real honey. Good stuff. Just a point of interest. I've just put our freshly extracted, empty now empty, but what we call sticky in the beekeeping industry, our sticky frames back on this hive, and you can see the bees can just smell that fresh exposed honey, and they're scrambling to try and get in through the vents which of course aren't bee size they're a lot smaller than bee size so they're just uh, going crazy basically because they can smell that fresh exposed honey well it's a big afternoon's work in the bee yard but uh, we've got two buckets out of it i'm just going to leave those cappings to uh, finish off draining into that bucket tonight and uh yeah I'll, um, I'll finish with a money shot, uh, pouring some honey into a jar. Catch ya. Just thought I'd throw this in there as well. Uh, interesting sort of red hue to this year's harvest. Um, as well as a delicious taste. Uh, one, and I'm, I'm thinking that might be well down to the bloodwood influence. Anyway. Time to go and take a long, slow honey bath. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Don't laugh, okay? It's a thing. <laughs>